Hello guys, welcome back to SI Technologies. So today we are going to discuss another topic in the PySpark. So, so how to read the CSV file in PySpark. So if you are new to this particular video, so I would request, okay. So how to set up the, how to set up the Databricks free account without paying any single penny. Okay. How to break, how to create a Databricks community edition. In this playlist, I have all in this first video I have explained. Please go through this particular video. After that, you can you can go to this video. You can start start seeing this video. So the topic is how to read the CSV file in PySpark. Very simple. First, let's go back to Databricks Community Edition. Databricks Community Edition. Here, if you see right, if you see Databricks Community Edition is available here. So let me log into it okay let me log into databricks community edition so here so here this is the my mail id as well as password is already stored now let me log into databricks community edition so now you can see this is the edition this is the overall thing first let's go ahead and here you have a multiple tabs okay here you can you can you can create a notebook okay as well as table as well as cluster so first we'll go with the workspace first we'll go with the create a notebook and other things see here you are able to create the notebook table cluster and we'll talk about in detail each and every concept for first for time being let's go ahead and see the how to how to read the file from csv later point of time we'll discuss in detail one by one as well as each each one how it is going to impact you how you can do that when i say impact it's kind of you know how you are going to use day in day out as part of your work okay now you here you can see okay first is compute okay here you have to create a cluster first thing is whenever you are going ahead and you are going to whenever you want whenever you wanted to execute anything right first you should have a resource right for example let me give you in a simple example if you wanted to perform something in your system you should have resources like cpu as well as memory as well as hard disk you should have it same way if you wanted to perform data breaks right you should have some cluster in a simplest form which i can say you should have some cluster so that particular cluster in by default in Databricks, you are having certain resources which they are going to provide. Okay. Now, here you can see I have already created the cluster. Let me show it. Okay. Let me delete this. Okay. Let me create it for you. Okay. Let me create it for you. Now, let me refresh it. Okay. Now, there is no compute. Now, I am creating newly. Sir, here by default, this is the cluster policies which is applied already in detail. Okay. But now here, just you, you can give it as a SRT tech test. Okay. SRT tech test. Okay. Just you can give any name. Even you can give your name as well. Now you can create a create compute. So once you create create compute, it will take some time to create a, it will take some time to create a cluster. Okay. So meanwhile, first, first, okay. We'll create notebook. We'll, we'll come back to here. Okay. We'll create a notebook where you are going to execute your PySpark code or SQL code or Scala code, everything you are going to do in this particular notebook, in this particular notebook, all the code, whatever you are going to write, right? Every single line of the code, which you are going to write it up, everything you are going to write it up here. So once I have click on create, create, okay, notebook, automatically the notebook has been created. Now you can rename this notebook by just by just clicking on that double click on that now you can create okay simply reading the csv file just mention that reading the csv file just you can make, name it as this one the notebook name is reading the csv file now here okay now here try to understand okay this is nothing but a it's kind of jupyter notebook right same similar kind of jupyter notebook which is available but here you are running the Databricks notebook, Databricks notebook here. If you see, right, if you see options, okay, either you wanted to run cell, run cell all above and run all below. Now first execute some print statement, okay, print statement, hello world, hello world. So by default, the 
by default in this particular in this particular databricks notebook it takes as a default language is a python default language it will take as a python right now run this particular thing run this particular thing okay now here if you observe right if you observe automatically it takes the assertic test assertic test okay now the it's nothing but if you wanted to run any command any command so what it has to be it has to go ahead and it has to be cluster should be available cluster should be available now go to workspace okay so here here you can see reading the csv file reading the csv file now you can see let me execute one more time to show you so you are able to do basic command of it now now you are able to do that here if you observe right by default it is as attached to a certec test cluster is ready here if you observe right compute go to compute okay in that i have created the cluster now cluster is active you can see cluster is running if you can hover over it here you can see cluster is running and now now go to notebook okay go to workspace or recents okay recents sometimes it is not showing in community edition now you can go to this notebook once you go to this notebook right now what is the what is the thing which we have to do we have to we have to read the csv file we have to read the csv file now okay let's go to oracle okay go to oracle just you can export this particular thing i have created one customer table okay customer table in this customer table okay what is that t select star from t customers okay let me run it up now you can see this is the table is available let me go ahead and upload this nothing but a export this particular thing okay where i'm going to explore ex export just i can export in testing purpose just i'll write it up take this location and mention that okay here you can see you can mention a csv and give the location here give the location and giving sample here i'm mentioning srt srt test csv test dot csv i'm i'm mentioning srt test dot csv so i'm clicking on next and finish now you can go to that folder you can go to that folder now you can see this is the file is available now if you wanted to read the file first you can upload them into dbfs dbfs now if you can click on catalog is nothing but a data data simply simplest form you can say data okay now here you have a tables are available but you don't have a dbs dbfs file system dbfs file system now what you have to do go to user settings okay go to user settings and advanced okay here you have a dbs dbfs file browser dbfs file browser now you can enable this one and refresh the refresh the this databricks workspace so once you refresh okay again go to catalog go to catalog now you can see data dbfs file system dbfs file system now what you can do just here once you click on dbfs file system upload upload okay once you click on upload here okay let me let me repeat it okay so go to catalog okay then here dbfs file system okay if you wanted to read some file in databricks first you can upload it for your sub if you wanted to read some local file okay you can upload into dbfs now i am uploading customers.csv now from where i am uploading that wherever the file is there just we have created srt test right now you can go to srt test now you can see here this file i am uploading here just i am opening and here it will take to upload now it is uploaded just done okay done now you can see file is available in the dbfs file system now go to workspace go to workspace and go to workspace okay go to workspace here here you can see users okay ravindra and read the csv file this is the file this is the notebook which we have created for reading the reading the csv file now click on here there is a click on here now what you can do first thing is okay just here by default when you are creating the spark cluster right if you go with the pi spark if you go with the scala okay if you go with the if you go with the pi spark and scala if you wanted to run it up in your pycharm or intellij 
you have to create the PySpark session. But when it comes to here, especially in the Databricks cluster, by default, Spark session is available. By default, Spark session is available. Now, directly you can go ahead and you can run the commands. Okay. Now, let me start with the very simplest command. Okay. Now, what I'm doing? BF. Okay. BF spark dot read dot format. Okay. Format. Okay. Now, what is the format? CSV file. Now, first, I'm not going to give any options. Directly, I'm going ahead and I'm loading the file. Where it is, where the file is available? Go to here, catalog. Okay. Go to DBFS and click on tables. Click on tables and this particular thing. Now, here you can see the folder name is available here. Okay. Let me click on it and copy and you can give this particular thing. And then what is that file name? Just click on it here. Again, just you can look at it here. File system, SRT test.csv, SRT test.csv. Now you can close this. You can write that SRT test.csv, SRT test.csv. Now I'm clicking on it here. Just I'm creating a data frame. We'll talk about data frame. For time being, consider as a, it is a simplest. Simply we can consider as a, it is a table. Consider as a table. Later point of time, I will explain you in detail about data frame how it works internally. Now you have created the data frame. Now I wanted to see in the data frame what how, what whether the CSV file is read properly or not. Simply you can write it up. You can write it up. There is a command. Okay. There is a command. In SQL, how you have a select command, same similar fashion here, you have a display command. Display command. We'll talk about just I'm giving as a layman examples here for to make you understand. Later point of time, I'll go with the much technical. Now here you can go display, display, and you can go with that DF, DF. Now we have how many records? Just run it up, okay? Now you can see how the data is coming. Here you can see data is coming, 12, 13 rows, which is coming. Can you observe here one thing? Can you observe in the first row, first in the file, if you open the file here, okay, if you open the file, SRT test.csv, okay? Okay, let me let me let me show you here because let me show you. So in the file, okay, in the file, okay, here first row is header. First row is header. Okay, customer ID, customer name, okay, email ID, mobile number, city and country. City and country. Now here, what you have given? You are mentioning CSV and you are directly loading the file directly loading the file so it is it is considering everything as a data everything is a data including header also it is considering as a data and if you observe here c c dot zero uh underscore c1 c0 underscore c1 underscore c2 underscore c3 it's a by default it is going to generate like this in the data frame if you have not given any schema any schema now if you wanted to read this as a read this customer ID, customer name, email ID, and mobile number and city, if you wanted to read this as a this as a specific, if you wanted to read this as a header, okay, what we have to mention in the same command, okay, what we have to do, we have to mention, okay, let me write it up here, bottom, okay, let me write it up, bottom, okay, see here, df1, okay spark dot read dot format okay so format okay so here csv and if you can click on dot options option okay option you can give us an option and here you can give header header is nothing but a first row it is going to consider as a header and then after that you can give a option here okay you are mentioning that okay first we'll do the option We'll do the header, then load the file, load the file. Okay, now here you can take the same, same, same path, everything and same thing. Now here you need not to write in another cell, just you can go ahead and execute this. Okay, now df1 is executed successfully. Now what I'm saying, display df1, df1, okay, display df1. Now 
here you can see you can observe here the first row is considering as a column name column name head if you give option header equals to true automatically first row will consider as a columns now in general if you go with the sql right oracle sql let me show you oracle sql if you wanted to see the if you wanted to see the data types as well as everything right how you you are going to see just you are going to see just you can see here describe and table name you are going to you are going to do that okay describe table name once you see describe table name what it is available customer id as well as data type you are going to see but in the same thing can i see in spy Pi spark how can i do that very simple okay you can go ahead and you can do the just you can click on it here okay another cell open it df1 dot print schema print schema okay now you can click on it okay df dot print schema just run it up okay now you can see it is considering as a print schema by default it treats as a strings by default it treats as a sing strings everything is reading as a string now can we can we can we read as a can we read as a first row is, first one is considering as a numbers right numbers okay can we consider can we read this as a proper data type proper data type can we see that okay let's see that i'm saying okay i'm giving another option saying that okay option i'm saying that okay let me let me do that option and i'm giving infer infer schema infer schema what i'm asking system to okay let me let me explain you after completion of the command now here you can see infer schema let me run it up one more time same command okay let me run one more time same command now you can see display okay display okay now you can see the data is displayed now you can see previously everything is reading as a string right now it is considering as a integer integer so what exactly we are saying to the system to the spark boss okay read the file okay read the file understand the data types okay understand the data types and give specific data type to every column every column by reading the data so what it does right internally first let me explain you in a very simplest and layman language first it is going ahead and it is reading the csv file and after that it is mentioning that header equals to true so it is considering first row is a header which means we are considering as a that is a schema okay that is nothing but a column names we are considering and after that you are saying infer schema infer schema so what it does right it is going to read every row okay if for that particular column customer id it is going to read all the rows one more time and it is going to identify dynamically okay it is going to identify the dynamically based on the data what it is available in that column it is going ahead and it is going to come it is going to define dynamically assigns assign the data type assign the data type to that particular column that is what it is happened before if i didn't if i don't give this here and for schema it is coming as a default as a string now after giving this it is considering as a integer integer now you are able to read the data okay you are able to read the data you are able to display the data and you are able to print the nothing but a data types you are able to print it out now sir sir everything is fine sir why you are you showing this much i wanted to utilize very simplest form is i know sql i wanted to go with the sql in PySpark. okay i wanted to go ahead and i wanted to deal with the deal with the sql i don't want to go with the i don't want to go with the data frame commands and other things data data frame functions and other things i don't want to go with it so simply simply what you can do once you read the file right by by reading this file okay you have created the data frame okay and you just you are displaying whether it is read it success it, whether it read successfully properly or not you are checking it out and then you are checking whether all columns come properly or not you have checked out now if you wanted to query if you wanted to do all the things is there are multiple ways to do that one is data frame way another is sql way 
very simplest form you can do that okay let's go ahead and do one thing okay df1 dot okay df1 dot df1 create or replace replace tempo view okay just you can create it up okay let's create sr srt table srt sr tech sr technologies sr technologies table okay table just you can mention srt tech table okay or that is not appropriate let's go with the table name only customers okay now here you have created the table nothing but a temp view you are creating temp view you are creating view is nothing but a virtual table same similar fashion here also view is available now from here okay you created customers now i wanted to utilize sql how can i utilize it very simple okay now you can go ahead and you can use the spark dot spark dot sql okay spark dot sql now you can go ahead and you can you can select star from select star from customers okay customers okay select star from customers now you wanted to display this output display just you can go ahead and you can do that you can do that can you see here can you see here now you are able to use the sql just you are changing the instead of spark dot okay here you are using the spark dot read for reading the file format you are giving this is the syntax guys okay if you are new i know it is going to be confused as well as you feel that it is something is like alien language don't worry about it just it is a syntax we have to go ahead and we have to follow now here what you are doing instead of spark dot read okay what you are doing you are trying to execute the ANC sql whatever the sql which we have learned as part of your classes right so just you are going ahead and you are using the spark.sql within that brackets whatever the query you wanted to do that you can write it up you can write it up and whatever you are executing here right spark select star from a select star from here you can see select star from a customers now i wanted to do it where condition just you can see where country country okay country equals to where country equals to india okay where country equals to india now if i'm going i can do that i can do that just you can see here only the india is data is coming let me do one by one step by step okay i don't want to take everything in a single cell okay here you can see display dot spark dot sql now you can see 12 rows are available now let me write it up here okay another another display command let's go ahead and spark dot sql okay spark dot sql select star from customers okay customers and then where where country equals to country equals to india okay this is the this is the easiest way to you can write it up okay you can utilize your sql whatever the sql knowledge which you have right you can utilize here and simply if you wanted to write into another data frame, just you can assign the output here, assign the output to here, whatever the, whatever you are executing here, right? Everything you can assign to some other data frame as well, data frame as well. But here we are not doing that. We are directly displaying nothing but your, whatever the output which is coming, right? You can display it here, nothing but you are showing here. Now you can execute it here. Okay, you can execute it here. Now you can see, SQL, whatever SQL, just you are using spark.sql and open bracket and close brackets. Behind the scenes, there are n number of things which is going to happen. But being a tester, you should understand how it is working, how it is working. How can I utilize the Spark? How can I utilize my SQL skills in Spark? Okay, now you can see where country. Now, what, I'm, what I can do, just I can go ahead and I can use the group by, group by clause. Okay, let me use the simplest spark.sql okay select select okay select what i'm going to do country okay country dot count of star okay count of star from okay from customers okay group by group by what country okay group by country let me display let me display nothing but a display is nothing but it is going to print 
okay it is going to show the output let me show you now you can see right you can see right now you can see here you can see here can you see here why india is coming india can you see here india is four and rest of the countries are rest of the countries are one 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 now can we go ahead and see can we identify the duplicate records here can we identify the duplicate records okay let's understand we have a phone number is having duplicate records right just go ahead and execute the same thing okay execute the same thing see here spark dot sql okay spark dot sql select okay can't select what is that mobile number okay mobile number oh, mobile underscore number okay count of star here mobile underscore number count of star okay count of star from customers okay customers okay group by group by group by what mobile number okay mobile number okay mobile number and having count of star count of star greater than one greater than one greater than one can we go ahead and display this nothing but you are printing same thing now can we do that can we see here one two three one two three four five six eight nine eight nine zero it's nothing but a seven eight nine zero which is having a duplicate records can you see here same thing whatever you are executing as part of your sql okay every comma everything you are able to do it here so is that simple now let me summarize it in a simplest way so first thing is two first is i have created a cluster okay i have created a cluster by coming here compute okay go to compute and create a cluster once you create a cluster and what i have done let me write it up step by step here okay step one is okay step one is create a cluster okay create a cluster first is okay let me go with the even basics as well log into log into okay log into databricks community edition community edition okay and second is step two is okay go ahead and create the cluster create the create the cluster create the cluster cluster where go to here go to here in compute go to compute and create compute there is an option create compute and then you can give here compute name okay once you give whatever the name and click on once you give automatically it is going ahead and it is going to create now in my case i have given sr tech test okay this is the second step which you have to do that okay go to go to compute and compute and create here go to compute and create compute once you do that create compute okay create compute and give the name give the give the give the name okay that is the second step third is okay go to step three okay generally by default if you go to catalog right catalog if you are a new user dbs dbfs is not enabled dbfs is not going to be enabled then what you have to do go to here in the username and go to user settings okay in user settings go to advanced and check it out this dbfs file browser dbfs file browser by default it is going to be disabled now what you have to do you have to enable it you have to enable on this particular thing once you enable and refresh it refresh it so again go back to catalog and you can see here dbfs is going to be available whatever the csv file which you have right just you can click on it here and click on it here you can upload you can upload here once you click on upload automatically you can draw you can go ahead and drop your files here by selecting here okay you can click on here by click on it clicking on it automatically what it is going to happen it will it will take you to the windows directory whatever the directory you wanted to give it right you can give it here and you can upload you can upload this is the third step which you have to do that once you have done that right once you have done that okay 
Once you have done that, file will be uploaded here. Now, next thing is what? You can create a notebook. Okay, create a notebook, which I have done already. And here you can see reading the CSV file, reading the CSV file. I have double click on this particular thing, reading the CSV, just I have renamed this particular uh, notebook name and I have done that. And I have given first statement is this one. And if you wanted to read the CSV file in PySpark, Spark, right? PySpark, just you can go ahead and you can use this command, spark.read.format, open bracket. This is has to be as it is, guys, without missing even single thing. Okay, we do have a multiple options. I don't want to overburden on single day everything. So I'm making you to comfortable with the simplest form. Now you can see here format.csv unload this. So while loading, okay, you have created this, just clicking on it by running the cell. Once you run the cell, automatically it is going to show here. Okay, you can click on it here. DF, once spark jobs, right? It is going to show spark jobs. Now you once you run it up, automatically what it is going to show it is going to show df is created now you can see now you can see df is created under that you have a columns and c underscore zero c underscore c zero c one like that it is going to show it is reading as a string everything now you can see you can display the data header also which is part of it now next activity is okay i don't want header to be included as a data then what you have to do same command spark.read.format csv okay and option you have to give dot option you have to give header equals to true option infer schema equals to true and you have to load the file you have to load the file once you load the file then you can see here the the first row whatever it is there it is reading as a 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 header header nothing but a call first head first row is nothing but a it is reading as a header and it is assigning the column names to data frame column names to it is reading as a schema now and while you are reading if you don't give in for schema it is reading as a default it is reading as a string so if you give in for schema internally it is reading it is going to read one more time that data and then on top of it what it is going to do it is going to give you the proper data types to specific columns, specific columns. Once you have done that, then what you have done, you have displayed that. And after that, if you wanted to see the schema, just you can click on df.1 print schema. After that, what we have done, whatever we have created data frame, how can I utilize, how can I utilize as a, how can I utilize the same thing, data frame, with the SQL. So simply what I have done, we have multiple ways to create views as well as you can even create it save as a table also. But here the simplest option for first couple of classes, right? So here I have done create replace or temp view I have created. Once I have created this one, so I can use this customer's table, customer's view as part of the SQL. SQL. So here you can see spark.sql select star from customers I have done then all automatically you will you will be able to all the ANC SQL whatever the SQL ANC SQL right it is going to be supported as part of the spark SQL so now I have done all the all the activities so you can practice it and very very important thing is okay it is completely free you need not to pay any single penny you need not to pay any single penny for this okay and the code will be dropped as part of the description. As part of the description, you can go ahead and you can utilize the same code. Thank you, guys. And please subscribe the channel as well as share with others as well. And in coming classes, what I'm going to do, I'm going ahead and I'm going to show you how can you how can you utilize the SQL much more, much more as part of the this. Once we understand the SQL, how we can utilize, then we'll go with the data frame functions data frame functions and how whatever we have learned operators as well as functions as well as you know logical operators com comparison operators null value null value related functions all things which will which i'm going to explain as part of this pi spark so you can relate straight away with the sql with the pi spark okay we'll talk about in detail one by one but i don't want to go with the too much technical at starting itself. 
don't comment like you know completely uh like he is not teaching like a technical way i don't want people to confuse too much about technical let's go with the basics then step by step step by step we'll go ahead and we'll learn much more okay thank you guys